Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Morby photographic tutorial on long exposure photography. My name is Angus Morby and I'm a landscape photographer. Today I'm going to tell you how to take photos like these. This video assumes that you know nothing. It starts at the start with long exposure photography. So if you are a seasoned pro, this video is probably not for you. Although I have included some tips, some hacks that have worked for me down the years that may also be of benefit to you. So let me know in the comments if any of these have been helpful. Now, this video comes with a warning. This style of photography is massively addictive and you may well get to the stage like me where you just want a long exposure everything which isn't necessarily good but it's loads of fun so you've been warned in this video i'm going to first cover some basic things that you need to know to shoot long exposures then go through with you step by step what to do when you're out on a shoot i've included the chapters in the description if you want to skip to a specific section Today I'm at Mattis Coombe Sands in South Devon so I can take some long exposure shots and actively demonstrate to you what I'm telling you in this video. As I'm at the beach I'm focusing on the long exposure effect on the sea but this also works for streaming taillights in cities and um, blurred skies and so on so it works for a number of different things. Now the first thing that we need to understand is what is a long exposure photograph? What happens inside the camera when we're taking a long exposure shot? Well, if you imagine the classic sound of a camera, that is the noise of your shutter opening and closing. Now if we take this camera here and we imagine the inner workings, you press a shutter button, you press to take your shot, the shutter lifts up and exposes the sensor at the back of the camera and the light coming in through the lens hits the sensor. The sensor is what records your image. It is what replaced the film in a digital camera. A long exposure photograph is where the shutter opens and stays open for a period of time. Water will start to blur at about three tenths of a second. So a long exposure photograph could be a few seconds, it could be 30 seconds, it could be five minutes. I've actually dug out a Star Trail shot that I shot in Newquay in 2017. It's not a particularly good one, but it illustrates the point because for this particular shot, I had the shutter open for 32 and a half minutes in order to get the stars trailing as the earth turns. It looks like the stars are moving in the sky and so you get that trailing effect. So it can be for a very long time. It all depends on what it is that you're trying to shoot. Now, whilst you've got the shutter open, anything in the image that moves during that time will blur and anything that is still or stationary will stay in sharp focus provided your camera is not moving more on that in a moment it's not a hard and fast rule but in general terms particularly with water the longer you have your shutter open for the more it will blur To shoot long exposures, we need to solve some problems. And the main one is that if we have the shutter open for a longer period of time, too much light is going to hit the sensor and therefore overexpose. Now, if you're shooting at night or if you're shooting shortly before or after sunset or sunrise, when the light levels are pretty low, you're going to be able to do long exposures without issue. In fact, they're probably going to be your only option at that time. However, in bright daylight like this, if we were to do a long exposure now, uh, so much light would hit the sensor that the photo would just be completely white because it would be so overexposed. The solution is ND filters, neutral density filters. Now, I'm using the Lee filter system and these are simply squares of glass that slide in front of the lens and what they do is simply make it darker so that the light coming into the camera lens is reduced. It means you can therefore expose for longer without too much light hitting the sensor and get the blurred effect that you're after with your long exposure. As I say, I use the Lee filter system. I've got the Lee little stopper here, which is a six stop ND and I've got the big stopper, which is a 10 stop ND. So uh, quite a bit darker. 
if you don't want to spend this much because the leaf filters system is really quite expensive then there are um, screwing alternatives cheaper screwing alternatives that you can just just have the one filter and it screws into the front of your lens and it will give you that reduction in the amount of light uh, have a look for those online the advantage i would say of using a filter system be that leaf filters or, or any other filter system is that it will then allow you to combine these filters with other things uh, such as a polarizer such as a grad nd to, to cut out the brightness in the sky and so on so that is a definite advantage there the second issue that we need to resolve to take long exposure photographs is that if there is any movement in the camera everything in the photo will blur and i'm not talking about is it waving from side to side i'm talking about the tiniest vibration so the camera needs to be on a tripod and the tripod needs to be rock solid there needs to be no movement so first of all handheld is obviously not going to work here what i would encourage you to um, work towards is the professional standard now the professional standard for the sharpness of an image is when you right click view image at full size depending on what software you're using it needs to look absolutely pin sharp at that size not just at the size you're viewing it at as normal size it needs to be completely sharp at full resolution to do that you as i say it needs the tripod needs to be rock solid there needs to be no movement at all so you need to watch out for things like vibrations from the wind or really strong wind wind actually physically moving your tripod soft ground like sand like mossy grass another obvious one is to make sure you don't knock the tripod in any way shape or form i imagine a few of you will have just watched what i've just said and thought well that's completely obvious come on move on to the next bit but i would strongly encourage you not to dismiss this because it needs to be at the forefront of your mind when you go out and take long exposure photographs I mention this particularly because I didn't do this. I was like, oh, that's obvious. I know it needs to be on a tripod. When I started, I'd go out and I wasn't thinking about my tripod. And there is nothing worse than thinking you've got the shot of a lifetime only to find that your tripod wasn't completely steady. And actually, it's ever so slightly blurred. That is heartbreaking. I've been there. I've made that mistake. So I would encourage you not to make the same mistake if you can your long exposure setup starts with your tripod before you've even thought about your camera you need to make sure that your tripod is rock solid and not being affected by anything around you a couple of tips is that you can some of them have a hook on like like this so you can like hang, hang a bag or weights from it uh, the only thing you need to do is make sure that is also not moving or that will in turn move your tripod uh, in very desperate situations you can i have got away with holding the tripod down downward pressure is what you need generally i wouldn't recommend it but in really windy conditions and you have no other options sometimes it, you can get away with it as long as you make sure when you're pressing down on the tripod that you are not moving yourself because otherwise you will blur the photograph the obvious solution is to get a heavy duty tripod um, this will help as more weight takes more energy to move it however I don't use one I probably will invest in one at some point I don't use one this is a Manfrotto Elements travel tripod and it has its advantages in being really light it folds up to this big it fits in a suitcase so swings and roundabouts but it does mean that I need to manage the situation more carefully when I'm shooting long exposures couple of other things to bear in mind with long exposures you will need to use the manual mode on your camera if you use automatic your camera will try to decide for itself what settings you use and may change your your shutter speed your ISO and so on um, and not allow you to get the long exposures that you want the other thing to bear in mind is that you cannot really shoot long exposures on a phone now if you've got a phone that allows you to access the settings to the camera in the same way you can on a DSLR and you've got a tripod for it then yes I suppose in theory you can do long exposure photography but in general you need a dslr or equivalent there are some phones out there like the new iphone 13 pro which claim to shoot long exposures but you can't if it's not on a tripod so 
what I believe they're doing is taking multiple shots, multiple fast shots, and then using software to blend them together. Now, that's not really long exposure photography. If it makes you happy, then knock yourself out, you know, enjoy yourself if, that, if that's what you want to do. But if you want to do proper long exposure photography, you will need one of these. So I'm gonna go through with you now, step by step, what to do when you're out and about on your photography trip to shoot long exposures. Step one, straight away. First thing before anything else is once you've picked your spot, make sure your tripod is absolutely rock solid. We've already covered this. Uh, I've just spent a couple of moments just digging mine into the ground there using the metal feet. So that really um, helps to prevent it from shifting. Quick tip here, if you are shooting in high winds and you're worried about the vibration on your tripod, I would, strongly recommend trying to find a position to shoot from that is out the wind. Is there a rock? Is there a tree? Is there anything that you can hide behind that's going to reduce the impact of the wind on your tripod and therefore reduce the chances of your shot turning out blurred? Step two is to, once you've got your camera on the tripod, is to compose your shot. What you need to bear in mind here is, what is it that's going to give you the long exposure effect in the shot? Uh, what is it that's gonna be moving? Where I am now, I'm shooting the whole little bay, so it's obvious I've got all, all the water here, but if, if you don't have very much that's going to give you the blurred effect in your shot, it's not really going to do a great deal for the final image. So that's worth bearing in mind when composing your shot. Step three, get your shot set up in terms of your settings and your filters. So you need to set your aperture, set your, your focus and your depth of field. So I can't really tell you where those should go. That will depend on the scene that you're shooting, but um, pick a spot for your focus, pick an aperture that gives you the correct depth of field. Um, if you are in a situation like a landscape situation where you can use a longer aperture, like f14, 16, 18, that's going to reduce the amount of light that's coming into the lens and it's going to give you the opportunity to have your shutter open for longer and get a more uh, smoothed out effect on the water or whatever it is you're shooting. So that's always worth bearing in mind. The other thing I need to mention here is the ISO. I would keep your ISO at 100, 200 at a push. Uh, just depends on your camera. Obviously every camera has different ISO capabilities, but generally keep it as low as, you, as it will go because that will give you the most time that you can open your shutter for for your long exposure. The only possible exception I can think of for this is if your exposure time is much longer than you want it to be. So let's say, let's say your exposure meter is telling you that you need to shoot for 30 seconds, but actually you only want to do 15, then maybe if you put the ISO up from 100 to 200, that's gonna bring it down a bit. That's a trick worth bearing in mind, but in general, keep your ISO quite low. At this point, implement anything else you're using, polarizer, grad NDs, set your shot up like normal, fix your focus point and your aperture. If you're photographing in low light and not using an ND filter, at this point in the process, you would skip to step five. Once you've got your shot all set up, you've got your filters on, you've set your ISO, your focus and your aperture, then you can go ahead and add your ND filter, but there might be something worth doing before that, uh, which is to lock your focus. Now I've just done it on mine. Um, the reason being is when you add the ND filter, there is a much lower level of light entering the lens. And so it is much harder for the camera to focus. Now this will depend on what camera and what lens you've got as to the results that you get. But sometimes you might add the ND, try and take the shot and the camera will try and refocus and then find that it can't because it's, the light level is now too low. The way around this is before you add the ND is to simply switch the camera, switch the lens from automatic focus to manual focus and then don't touch it. The focus will now not change providing you don't move anything on the lens. You don't move the focus ring on the lens which will have then of course mock everything up and you'll have to start again. So don't do that. 
One thing I can tell you here is if you're using a very dark filter, such as a 10 stop ND or even a 15 stop ND, a super stopper in the Lee filters range, um, I can pretty much guarantee that it's not gonna focus with that on. So what you'd need to do, as I say, set your focus and lock it before you add the filter. Top tip here is to remember that you've locked it and unlock it again after you've taken the shot because if you then forget, like I have done so many times, wander off and start taking a different shot, your focus will be locked in the wrong position for your new shot more than likely because you've set it for another shot. So that is something to remember there. So step five, once you've added your neutral density filter, the only thing left to do is set the exposure. Now, use your exposure meter for that. You will see uh, immediately, as soon as you've added the ND, that the, the exposure meter will change and tell you that you are what your current exposure is way too dark and that you need to lengthen the shutter speed to make it much lighter, which of course is what we're trying to achieve here. One thing to mention about the exposure meter, I don't know what it is or what, what the reasoning is for this, but I don't always agree with mine. I sometimes find that I need to make it a, a few notches of shutter speed lighter to actually get the exposure that I want. It will ultimately depend on your camera and your lens, but have a, have a play around, experiment, bit of trial and error, see what works for you, take some different exposures, and then you'll get a sense of where your camera is with your expectations versus what the exposure meter is telling you. I typically only find that I need to make my exposure lighter when using an ND. If I'm shooting at sunrise or sunset in low light without an ND, I often find that I need to make the exposure a couple of shutter speed notches darker to properly represent the scene as the camera's light meter will try to achieve the same light levels as daylight. Step six, when you've set your exposure, you are good to go. But there is one tip I have here. This is a remote shutter switch and I would very much recommend using one. They don't have to be massively expensive. You can get cheap ones online. When I press the button there, that fires the shutter and the camera takes a shot. The reason this is important is if I was to press the shutter button on top of the camera to take the shot, even that tiny vibration of touching the camera can be enough to blur your image. And of course, this is what we're trying to avoid. So use a remote shutter, take your shot and check the results. So this is the shot that I set up. It's not the best shot ever taken, but it demonstrates the outcome of the steps I've just taken you through. For this, I used a little stopper. The sea looks quite smooth because it was a relatively calm day aside from the waves lapping onto the beach, but the shorter exposure of the little stopper would have generated far less smoothness if the seas had been rougher as per these images. I'd anticipate much smoother water when using a big stopper where the exposure time is likely to be 60 seconds minimum. This is because a six stop ND is not 60% of the darkness of a 10 stop. Each stop is half of the light level of the previous stop, making a 10 stop ND considerably darker than a six stop ND. There is something else to bear in mind if you take exposures that go beyond 30 seconds. Now the average camera will only offer shutter speeds in manual up to 30 seconds. That's, that's fairly normal. It's certainly the case for this, which is a Canon 5 DSR and a really decent piece of kit. So that's, that's to be expected. If you're using a really dark ND like a big stopper or a super stopper, then the chances are you will almost certainly need to shoot over 30 seconds and to do that what you need to do is find bold mode on your camera now on mine here it's just it's the b that's next oh sheep 
on my camera it's the uh, B, it's next to manual, I switch to that and you will notice that the option to set a shutter speed is no longer there and the reason for it is this. If you were in bold mode um, you can set the shutter speed via a timer yourself. What I would need to do is click that in and then lock that. Once it is locked, the shutter will stay open for as long as I leave it open for. Obviously, you need to manage that in terms of how much exposure do you need, how long are you leaving it open for. When my shot is finished, when I don't want to shoot anymore, I can then unlock that and the shutter will then close. There is a timer on the top of my camera here that tells me how long it has been open for and uh, ultimately how blurred or how exposed my shot might be. In bulb mode, there is no exposure meter as the camera cannot calculate the exposure without knowing the shutter speed, which is going to be determined by you. It requires trial and error to figure out how many seconds you need to leave the shutter open for. Um, if you're using a, a big stopper, which is a 10 stop ND, I can tell you from experience with my setup, I need to leave in, in poor light, like we're experiencing right now, I'd need to leave it 70, 80, probably 90 seconds with a 10 stop ND in order to get a decent exposure. A little stopper on the other hand would be significantly less. It would probably be more 12, 15 seconds to get a decent exposure in this light, in which case I wouldn't need bulb mode. But yeah, just play around with it. It can be quite frustrating to either under or overexpose your image, but it can also be very rewarding when you then get it right. If you are using bold mode with an ND that's 10 stops or more, then you can actually get some really fancy fine art style images where the water looks like it's completely turned to mist. And uh, yeah, it can be really rewarding and you can get some really interesting artistic results. So just experiment and above all, enjoy yourself. Get, you know, enjoy the photography and the, the thrill of the chase to get great shots. That's what I'd recommend. That's it for this tutorial, folks. Hopefully I've managed to cover everything that you need so that you can go out and take great long exposures for yourself. Uh, please let me know if you have some success or if you have any failures in the comments, if there's anything I've missed or if there's anything that anyone wants to add for other people's benefit, then also please stick those in the comments. I'd, I'd love to see it, that'd be great. Hit like if you've enjoyed this video, subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next tutorial or vlog or location guide. There will be another video soon, guys. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.